Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. As the day panted for the water brook, so our hearts pant for your word this moment. We ask, Lord, that you will feed us with the word of life. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I welcome you to the 13th edition on our study titled, A Study of David. Amen. Now, in the previous post, we were able to see that Saul and David, you know, to go face Goliath with his weapons. And David had to drop them because he said he wasn't familiar with them. And we concluded by asserting that you do not go to the war front with weapons that you're not familiar with. Because if you do, the enemy is going to kill you. Amen. And so David had to drop the weapons of Saul. And in dropping the weapons of Saul, he had to pick on his own weapons. And let me let you know this. The fact that a weapon, a particular weapon, spiritual weapon is effective for a particular individual, for a particular believer, does not, does not mean that that particular weapon will be effective for you. It all depends on your familiarity with it. It all depends on your use of it over the year and the level of confidence that you have, that you have been able you know, to, to discover, to amass in the use of that particular weapon. Amen. For instance, the use of praise and worship could be effective for a particular believer in tackling challenges in, in his life, but that may not be effective for you. For some others, it could be prayers. Still, for some other believers, it could be the use of the word of God. The important thing is that you are familiar with your weapons. Amen. And I must let you know that no weapon is more effective than the other as far as God is concerned because they are all weapons of our warfare. The effectiveness, the potency is dependent upon the extent to which you have been able to practice with them over the years and you've gotten yourself familiar or used to the particular weapon. Amen. So you've got to know the weapon that is effective for you in any particular situation in life. Praise God. In the case, in the case of David, David had to pick the weapons that he was familiar with. And I must let you know from 1 Samuel chapter 17 that these weapons that David picked, they appeared to be stupid, they appeared to be foolish, they appeared to be nonsensical. In fact, any, any, any soldier that sees these weapons will say, what are these? These are not weapons. And that, and that, and that is why so Goliath could look upon him with disdain that how come you are coming before me with this kind of weapons? Hallelujah. Praise God. And so, and, and, and so David, you know, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, picked his weapons that he was familiar with. What are these weapons? These weapons are, as the Bible says, he picked, he, no, he picked the catapult or, or we say a sling. He picked the stones, the stones from the brook. In fact, the Bible says he picked five of them and that these stones he placed in his shepherd bag and then he drew near the enemy, Goliath. Praise God. Now, in terms of looking at the meanings or interpretation of these weapons, these weapons can be seen, you know, from different perspectives. But I want us to look at it from this perspective. Amen? Praise God. Now, first of all, he picked the stone. We can say that the stone represents the word of God. Because the Bible says in Psalm 118 that the stone that the builders have rejected have become the chief cornerstone. And of course, we know that the chief cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. We also see from scripture again, specifically from Daniel chapter 2, that it was the stone that smote the image of Nebuchadnezzar into pieces and became, and, you know, and had authority or had rule over the nations of the world. And when Daniel interpreted that dream, he said that that particular stone that smote the image into pieces represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the word of God. And that is why we've come to the conclusion that the stone that David picked, you know, could be likened to the word of God. And why would he have picked five? Of course, we know that five represents grace in the Bible. But beyond that, David picked five just in case one is not sufficient to bring the enemy down. Amen. Praise God. You must have more than enough of the word of God in your life. Praise God. You must not be like the five foolish virgins that didn't take extra oil in them. They were presumptuous that the oil that they had in their lamp was enough to carry them through. But the, but the wise virgins took much more than enough. And so you must have much more than enough word of God in your life. Praise God. Now, when we talk about the shepherd's bag, the shepherd's bag, of course, is where, is where you keep the stones. The shepherd's bag, in this sense, could be likened, you know, to your heart. The Bible says that word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. And also Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 22, he said, My son attains to my words. And he closes that by saying, Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto them that find them and medicine to all their flesh. 
where you keep the word of God is in your heart, not just in your brain, because your brain is not what is going to make use of it. It is a heart. It is from the heart that the word of God comes forth. The Bible says from the heart comes the abundance of life. Amen. Praise God. So, so, so the, your heart is, your heart is represented, you know, by the shepherd's bag. You keep the word of God in your heart, just as David kept the stones even in the shepherd's bag. Amen. Then the third item that he picked, of course, is a sling. It is with the sling that you shoot even the stone. And in this case, the sling represents your mouth. It is with your mouth that you speak for the word of God. Amen. In Revelation chapter 1, verses 18 to, to, verses 18 to the end, when John the Apostle saw the Lord Jesus Christ, he saw the two edges so proceeding forth out of his mouth. It is with your mouth that you speak the word of God. Amen. Now, when you study the temptation of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 4 and also in Luke chapter 4, the Bible says that each time he spoke the word, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. He had to speak the word of God. He didn't close his mouth. You address situation speaking for the anointed word of God that is in your heart and that is what brings the enemy down. Amen. As I close, I want you to consider this. Now the Bible talks about Ephraim. Ephraim was armed in the day of battle, but Ephraim refused to fight. In fact, he turned his back and you must not be like that. After David had picked these weapons, the Bible says he drew near Goliath. He was ready to fight. He was ready to confront. He was ready to bring him down. The essence of you being armed, praise God, is not just for you to be armed, but it is for you to rise up and fight in the day of battle. Amen. Just one more point to close with. Now, every Israelite, I, I, I mean the soldiers, you know, that were in the camp, of Saul to face Goliath, they were all armed, amen. But the problem was that they had, they didn't have enough confidence in the weapons which they armed. They didn't have enough confidence that those weapons were able to bring Goliath down. In the case of David, David trusted the effectiveness of the weapons. He had enough confidence that with these weapons, I am able to bring the enemy down. You must have confidence in the weapons that God has trained you over the years to use to confront the enemy. I pray for you that the word of God will dwell in your heart richly in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And in the day of battle, you will not hesitate to speak for the word of God, the power to bring down the enemy. God bless you in Jesus' name.